Today we have a tutorial on a very important aspect, respiratory examination. And in the respiratory examination, we like to cover the percussion and auscultation. I am Dr. Faisal Fayaz Uweri, working as Associate Professor of Pulmonology. So we start with the basically covering what you have learned previously, that is inspection, palpation, very briefly in a form of sequence. Then we proceed as per the today's topic. So starting with this thing, we start with the what's the basic sequence. This is just an overview as well. So in the integrated examination sequence, first of all, you need to introduce yourself and seek the patient's consent to chest examination. You have to position the patient in a comfortable posture with the chest supported at about 45 degrees and the head resting on a pillow. Then you should carry out the general observations very quickly. This will happen, say, about in a few seconds, maybe 10, 15 seconds. Just a very quick observation. This come with practice. There are any clues around the patient. Just have a very brief look. Is there any oxygen? Patient is having an oxygen face mask, nasal cannula, anything. There's the oxygen cylinder beside the patient or not. Is there a nebulizer machine? Uh, sit uh, there at the bedside, or there are any inhalers, or are there any sputum pots for collecting the sputum? Are there or not? So, these are important things. Then, observe from the bed scars, any scars. You observe the shape of the chest, asymmetry, pattern of breathing. In the pattern of breathing, the respiratory rate. Time spent in inspiration and expiration, first lip breathing is present or not, chest fall movement, paradoxical rib movement, intercostal indrawing, accessory muscle use, for example. Coming over next to the examine the anterior chest fall. So in the anterior chest fall, in the palpation part, palpate the apex feet, right ventricular heave, look for expansion of upper and lower chest do the percussion. In doing the percussion, you have to compare right with the left and from top to bottom. This is always going to happen. Whether you percuss or you auscultate, this is very important that you compare both sides and you compare from top to bottom as well. So in anterior chest, remember the axillae. Axillae are included in the anterior chest examination. One can ask you to examine the anterior chest. One can ask you to examine the posterior chest. So currently we are doing the anterior chest. In auscultate, deep breaths. Ask the patient to take deep breaths when you are auscultating. Because if you will not ask the patient to take deep breaths, you might miss the findings. Then again, the same thing as you are doing in percussion, comparing the right with the left from top to bottom and then exhale. You repeat positions asking the same patient to say one, one, one for vocal resonance. So auscultation is done in two stages. First stage, as mentioned, take the deep breaths, compare right and left breath sounds are present or absent. And what is the amplitude of the breath sounds? And what is the, we'll do, discuss in detail. This is the sequence, so we're going very briefly. So in the, then you ask them to repeat the same procedure by asking the patient to say 111 one, one or 9999, 99, any one of them. This is to jump to assess for vocal resonance. Coming to examine the posterior chest fall, ask the patient to sit forward so that you can inspect the back for any scars, asymmetry, and so on. You palpate when your posterior chest, you palpate the cervical lymph nodes as well. And you do the expansion of the upper and lower chest. Now, coming over this, this is also a part of respiratory examination. We call it the relevant part. 
examine the interior chest and do the relevant examine in the relevant obviously you do for examining the hands for clubbing any tar staining any muscle wasting check for tremor or any flap present asterisks of flapping tremor measure the respiratory rate unobtrusively examine the face for anemia cyanosis horner syndrome and signs of superior vena cava obstruction and then examine the neck so hands face neck in the neck jvp jugular venous pressure tracheal deviation present or absent and uh, cricosternal distance then proceed for percussion percuss ask the patient to fold their arms at the front to part the scapulae so that the scapulae moved away and you can percuss accordingly again the same part compare right with left from top to bottom auscultate the deep breaths compare again right with left top to bottom and then the exhale you can repeat the same positions by asking the patient to say 1 1 1 for vocal resonance check for pitting edema over the sacrum and lumbar spine now here i am going to paste the video link in the chat box and then you can excuse me hello moderator please hello hello हेलो जी सर भैया वीडियो चैट बॉक्स का बताएं आप आपके पास मोर ऑप्शन आ रहा है ये मेरे पास आ रहा है मोर ऊपर तीन ऑप्शन मोर का ऑप्शन टॉकिंग जहां लगा मोर को आप क्लिक करेंगे तो थंब नेल्स वीडियो ग्रेट वीडियो मोर तो नहीं आ रहा है यहां पे देखिए सर नीचे नीचे बाहर नीचे मोर आ गया जी 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 आ गया खोलेंगे ना क्लिक आ गया हां चैट आ गया हां इसको खोलें इसको खोलूं ओके हां इसको खोलें और ये लिंक को कॉपी पेस्ट कर दें उसके अंदर अच्छा पहले ही इसको मैं बंद कर ये इसी में को ऐसे को कॉपी पेस्ट कर दें इसको बंद करूं पहले ऐसे नहीं होगा सर सेलेक्ट करें इसको पूरा कोने से इसको उससे अच्छा हां पूरा सेलेक्ट करेंगे ना वहां से यहां कॉपी करें उधर पेस्ट कर दें ऐसे नहीं होगा क्लिक करके क्लिक करेंगे ना सर उस पे वो ओपन हो जाएगा लिंक ओपन जी जी लिंक तो ओपन नहीं करना ना ये लिंक ओपन हो रहा है हां लिंक ओपन है हमें शेयर करना है लेकिन इससे हो नहीं रहा इस पे चल नहीं रही ना सर्विस तो मुझे पता है उसको आप रोटेट करेंगे तो वो या शिफ्ट से कर ले शिफ्ट एरो से शिफ्ट एरो से कर ले नहीं नहीं एच पे एच एच से पहले आप कर्सर रखें क्लिक करें एच से पहले क्लिक करता हूँ आगे चला जाता हूँ एच से पहले ये एच से पहले कर रखा है ये देखें ये अब शिफ्ट दबाएं एक क्लिक करें एक दबाएं एक दबाएं क्लिक करें शिफ्ट के स जी 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 कौन सा ये ये शुरू हो गया है वहां पे पता नहीं खुल गया सर एक वहां पर कोई बंदा नजर आ रहा पीछे देखिए आप कोई ना कोई तो होगा सर एक्सक्यूज मी भेजे भाई जरा इनको पेस्ट करना है कहां है वो बुला के लाए जरा प्लीज जल्दी से बुला ले जल्दी कर जरा तेज तेज जाओ जरा कौन है वो हां सर हां सर अब आप शिफ्ट दबा के करिएगा इसे मैं कर रहा हूं भाई ये इसमें ये सिस्टम अच्छा चलिए सर वो बंद आएगा ना बंद कर देगा ये अब आया अब हुआ हां ले जाए पूरा ले जाए पूरा ले जाए जी मैं पूरा ले जाऊं हां कंट्रोल सी करें कंट्रोल सी पी टी एल एल सी कर लिया है और ये मैं अब वहां जाके कंट्रोल वी कर देता मैं कर रहा हूं चैट में डाल रहा हूं यहाँ पे यहीं पे कहा डालना टाइप मैसेज मैसेज पे हेलो 
पेस्ट यस कर दिया एंटर कर दू हेलो जी हेलो हेलो प्लीज ओपन दिस लिंक एंड वॉच द वीडियो प्लीज देन विल हैव द लेक्चर बैक हेलो ए मॉडरेटर प्लीज हेलो जी हेलो जी जी वीडियो मैंने लिंक पेस्ट कर दिया है फिर हाल में स्टूडेंट देख रहे हैं दस मिनट की वीडियो है तो ग्यारह मिनट की उसके बाद हम दोबारा लेक्चर करेंगे ठीक है सही है सर जी सर जी सर जी सर सही है ना देख रहे हैं ना कमेंट्स तो आ रहे थे ओके ओके आ गया था कि हमें मिल गया लिंक बच्चे कह रहे थे स्टूडेंट्स हमारे है ना This video will demonstrate a systematic approach to examining the respiratory system. It will also give examples of pathology that may be encountered in an abnormal respiratory system. As with any examination, wash your hands, introduce yourself, get permission of the patient, inquire about pain and ensure privacy, adequate exposure and correct position. For a respiratory examination, the patient should be sitting at 45 degrees and exposed to the waist. I'm just going to start by having a look around the bed, so don't mind me. At this point, the doctor is looking for any monitoring, treatments or paraphernalia surrounding the patient. And I'm just going to have a look at you for a moment as well. The doctor is now inspecting the patient. Here is an example of what to look out for when inspecting the patient. If I could start by having a look at your hands, please. The doctor is looking for signs of clubbing, cigarette stains and peripheral cyanosis. And can you make this sign, please? Clubbing can be demonstrated by Sharmuth's window test. Normally, there is a diamond-shaped window between the fingernails of the two index fingers. However, in a patient with clubbing, this window disappears. Here are some examples of respiratory causes of clubbing. That's good. Thank you. And if I can have a look at your hands again? The doctor is looking for wasting of the small muscles of the hands, particularly the dorsal interossi and thenar eminence which can be a sign of Pankost's tumour in the apex of the lung. 
compressing the lower nerve roots of the brachial plexus. That's good. And can you put your arms out like this and cock the wrist back and close your eyes, please, and hold them there. Here the doctor is looking for any signs of CO2 retention flap that looks like this, or salbutamol-induced tremor that looks like this. I'm just going to take your pulse. At this point, the doctor takes the patient's pulse for 15 seconds and then measures the patient's respiratory rate for a further 15 seconds. A normal respiratory rate is 12 to 16 breaths per minute. And at this point, I would also offer to take the blood pressure. If you could just relax your head back and turn your head to that side. The doctor will now look for the jugular venous pressure in the neck. This is the pulsation of the internal jugular vein, which can be found above the clavicle between the two heads of the sternocleidomastoid. And I'm just going to feel for one of the pulses in your neck. The doctor is feeling for a bounding pulse, which is present in CO2 retention. And can you turn your head back to the middle, please? I'm just going to feel for your windpipe. This might be a bit uncomfortable, OK? The doctor is now feeling for any tracheal deviation, and then the cricosternal distance. The JVP is raised when it is more than 3 cm in vertical height above the sternal angle. A raised JVP may be caused by the examples shown. The trachea may be deviated in the situations shown. The cricosternal distance is the distance between the suprasternal notch and the cricoid cartilage. This should be three fingers. If the chest is hyperexpanded, the distance is shorter. I'm just going to have a look at your face now. The doctor is looking for facial plethora which is sometimes present in smokers and SVC obstruction. The doctor also compares the size of the pupils and the degree of ptosis and anhydrosis, which can indicate Horner's syndrome. Horner's syndrome and SVC obstruction can both be caused by Pankost's tumour. The doctor will now check for conjunctival pallor, which is a sign of anemia. And if you could look up to the ceiling and pull down on one of your eyelids. That's great. Thank you very much. And could you open your mouth? The doctor is looking at the mucous membranes to assess hydration status. And stick out your tongue. And could you put the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth? And for central cyanosis to assess the oxygenation of the patient. Could you put your hands behind your head for me? That's great. I'm just going to have a look at your chest. Here the doctor is inspecting the anterior chest wall and axillae for scars, radiotherapy tattoos, skin changes and any chest Five wall deformity. Left. Then we'll come she back to the lecture. She also watches the breathing pattern carefully. Hello. Yes, sir. I have five Excuse minutes uh, left. Yeh, post to mera sahi hua hai. Everyone ko chala gaye. Hai na? Aha, sab likha hua hai. Yeh, yeh, shalu khana hai. Shayad baat karna chahta hai. Unse aap dekh. Kyunki abhi humne to post kar diya hai. Aha, sir. 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 Aha, here the doctor anyone, checks at the anterior uh, posterior the chest. Aave here yes, sir, can anyone send the link please? Oh, man, uh, here the doctor is feeling for the anyone pick up the fifth ah, in the posterior ah, posterior ah, From me to everyone. Oh, shuru mein maine kya from me first talk to us, but yeah, from me to everyone. Take it. 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 Take the doctor is listening for the intensity and quality of breath sounds I don't and any added yeah. sounds. Breath sounds are yeah. 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 the yeah. student of all G. Good, good, good. But we're watching the it. There are five, six minutes like left. After that, we'll complete it. We'll be back. Come back. Question, question, coming, sir.
Or polyphonic. A plural rub can also be heard in pneumonia and pulmonary infarction. How could you say 99 each time I put my stethoscope on your chest? 99. Here the doctor 99. is listening to vocal resonance and comparing the 99. left and the right. In areas of lung consolidation, 99 is heard more clearly. But in areas of plural effusion, the sound intensity is reduced or absent. I'm just going to feel some of the glands in your neck, so if you'd like to just rest your chin against my fingertips. The doctor is palpating for the submental, submandibular, preauricular, postauricular anterior cervical trunk, supraclavicular, posterior cervical trunk, and occipital lymph nodes. These are located as shown. I'm just going to have a look at your back. Here the doctor is looking for the same signs as on the front, as well as any spinal deformities. And I'm just going to put my hands around your back now, like we did on the front. You could take a deep breath in and all the way out. The doctor measures lateral expansion on the back the in, as she did on the front. That's great, thank you. Do you have any pain in the bottom of your back? No. The doctor is checking for peripheral edema, which occurs at the sacrum in bed bound patients and can be a sign of right sided heart failure. Okay. I'm just going to tap on your back now if that's okay. The doctor percusses the back in the upper, middle and lower zones, comparing the left and the right side, listening for the same pathologies as on the anterior chest wall. Good. And if I could just have a listen as well. Could you take some deep breaths in and out through your mouth, please? Hello. The doctor auscultates the left yes, and right, well, upper, middle and, and, and lower zones. Lectures, we're starting the lecture, coming back to the lecture, sounds. students. Okay, so we're going to the next slide now. All right. Percussion. In percussion, basically, uh, this the purpose is to distinguish areas of chest wall over air-filled lung from those overlying the consolidated lung or fluid. The purpose again the is to detect the asymmetry of resonance between the mirror image positions on the right and the left sides. There are certain types of percussion notes, resonant, which is normal in general, hyper resonant means more hyper, dull, less, and stony dull. Stony dull is the percussion note when you percuss over the cemented wall. Um, jo regular cement walls, if you percuss over that thing, the note which you hear and is basically the stony dull. And you feel and hear. So resonant, hyper resonant, dull, and stony dull. Next. Uh, okay. So how to do a proper percussion? You have seen the video now. But just to reinforce, apply the middle finger of your non-dominant hand firmly to an intercostal space parallel to the ribs and drum the middle phalanx with the flex tip of your dominant index or middle finger. Always percuss in sequence, comparing areas on the right with corresponding areas on the left before moving to the next level. As far as the posterior chest is concerned, the scapular and spinal muscles obstruct the percussion. So 
you ask the patient sit to sit forwards with their arms folded in front to move the scapula laterally away from the percussion area percuss a few centimeters lateral to spinal muscles taking care to compare positions the same distance from the midline on the right and left in healthy people anterior chest percussion is symmetrical except for the area immediately lateral to the lower left sternal edge where the right ventricle causes dullness and this is known as cardiac dullness so this cardiac dullness is lost in hyperinflated patients patients with having copd for example maybe not always maybe similarly area of liver dullness which is normally present in the right sixth rib of fifth intercostal space the rib is sixth or space is fifth in mid clavicular line it is obliterated or it's lower down in emphysema or severe asthma this picture is showing you the how to do a proper percussion okay percussion technique these are the areas anterior chest and the lateral sides in the x ray where to percuss these are the posterior sides where to percuss auscultation auscultation start from the apices again the same principle comparing right with the left and changing to the bell you can change to bell if you cannot achieve the proper flat skin contact with the diaphragm otherwise you listen with the diaphragm is okay ask the patient to take repeated slow deep breaths in and out through their open mouth this is important if you don't ask the patient to breathe like this you may not hear anything and you miss all the findings so you do this auscultate the anterior chest wall from top to bottom always comparing mirror image positions on the right and left before moving down use the same sequence of sights as i have just shown you and discussed before as for percussion the same sequence sights for auscultation and percussion do not waste time by listening to repeated breath sound you keep ek jagah hi khade ho gaye and you keep listening for say about 25 30 half a minute there so it will not serve the purpose so do not you listen but you that doesn't mean yeah, you should put the step without listening to even a single breath you move to the next position so either extremes less or more both are not desirable so do not waste time by listening to repeated breath sound at each position unless you suspect an abnormality and wish to check then you, okay, it's okay you can wish more time on the same place because you are suspecting an abnormality or you getting some signs note whether the breath sounds are soft and muffled absent or loud and harsh bronchial like those heard over the larynx see the bronchial breath sounds can normally can be heard over the larynx see can note any asymmetry and added sounds deciding which side is abnormal auscultate the lateral chest wall in the mid axillary line again comparing right with left before changing the level added sounds there are three common added sounds you should know wheezes crackles also known as crepitations plural rub wheeze so wheeze what are wheeze what is the wheeze wheeze is a musical whistling sound accompanying air flow and usually originates in narrowed small airways most commonly expiratory in origin why due to dynamic airway narrowing on expiration but it can also occur on inspiration usually multiple wheezing sounds are heard together we call it polyphonic wheeze this sign is common in asthma bronchitis and exacerbation of copd if you hear a solitary 
V's that is present consistently with each breath and does not clear with cuffing suggests a possible fixed bronchial obstruction. And this can be an important sign of underlying cancer. Maybe. Crackles. Crackles basically represent the sudden opening of small airways, but sometimes may indicate secretions in the airways, or they may signify underlying lung fibrosis. Crackles persisting after several breaths and do not clear with a deliberate cuff are pathological. Graded. So two main grades, fine crackles, coarse crackles. Fine crackles are soft, multiple crackles. Example, pulmonary edema, viral pneumonia. Coarse crackles are loud, scanty crackles that tend to change with each breath. Example, bronchopneumonia, bronchiectasis. There's a type of fine crackles we, known as Velcro crackles, where there are showers of fine crackles during inspiration, resembling the sound made by peeling a Velcro fastener, a characteristic of interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, a condition. IPF, for example, that's what it's. Inspiratory crackles often heard over areas of incompletely inflated lung, immediately above a pleural effusion. So you can hear in a pleural effusion, above the pleural effusion, the inspiratory crackles as well. Pleural rub, the third added sound, is a rasping, grating sound occurring with each breath and sounding superficial just under the stethoscope like two sheets of sandpaper rubbing together. This indicates pleural inflammation, usually due to infection, and is often accompanied by pleuritic chest pain. Vocal resonance. Remember, the auscultation is done in two stages. The first is to look for the presence of breath sound, their character, normal vesicular breathing, bronchial added sound, then you repeat the same thing by doing vocal resonance. In this, you ask the patient to generate laryngeal sounds deliberately. Please say, ask the patient, please say, one, one, one. Each time I move my stethoscope on the skin and listening on the chest fall in the same sequence of sights used for breath sounds. So spoken sound is muffled and deadened over healthy lung but the spoken sound is heard loudly and clearly through the stethoscope over the consolidation or fibrotic lung scarring. Consistent with absent breath sounds, vocal resonance is absent or greatly diminished over pneumothorax and pleural effusion. There's another term, we call it whispering pectrolurky. This may be used to confirm the same changes in sound conduction. Whispered speech is muffled to silence by normal lung. Okay. Whispering pectoral normal lung, muffled to silence, but may be heard over consolidated or scarred lung. So percussion notes their types and their differential diagnosis. So one is hyper-resonant percussion note. Causes pneumothorax, big cavity, big bully, emphysema causes of cause of stony dull percussion pleural effusion causes of dullness dull percussion note thick and pleura consolidation collapse mass lesion raised diaphragm due to hepatomegaly because there is dullness on the right side where liver is on the right side in general auscultation causes of remember the causes of bronchial breathing what is bronchial breathing? There's a gap between inspiration and expiration, right? And expiration is as long at least as inspiration, okay? Whereas in normal vesicular breathing, there is no gap between inspiration and expiration, and expiration is shorter than inspiration. 
that was normal vesicular breathing. But in bronchial breathing, two main criteria gap between inspiration and expiration, and the expiration is at least as long as inspiration. And third, also, they say there's a blowing tubular character which you can hear. Okay. So the causes of bronchial breathing, fortunately, are the same as well as the increased vocal resonance causes. And the mnemonic for this, to remember them easily, are three Cs. First C for consolidation. Second C for collapse with patent bronchus. Third is cavity near the chest wall. So causes of bronchial breathing are three Cs, as well as causes of increased vocal resonance are also the same. The last one is fibrosis, which is, can also give you bronchial breathing, with, but of low pitched character. Causes of decreased vocal resonance, pleural fusion, thick and pleura, pneumothorax, collapse with complete bronchial obstruction, and mass lesion. Crackles, if reduce or disappear after coughing, then certain things one should consider. Resolving pneumonia, bronchiectasis, lung abscess, pulmonary edema. Crackles not changed after cupping, coughing, generally in interstitial lung disease, ILDs. Causes of bilateral basal crepitations or crackles, bilateral bronchiectasis. Pulmonary edema due to any cause, commonly due to acute left ventricular failure. And the last one is having interstitial lung disease. Thank you very much. Hello. This is this is the. जी भाई, जी भाई. बताएं सर. ठीक है, क्रैक्टर खत्म हो गया. ठीक है सर. सर एंड करें. क्वेश्चन. जी क्वेश्चन वो है तो पूछ लें उन्होंने कुछ. हाँ सर वो चैटिंग होने सर. Crepitations or crackles, they are same they are, as I mentioned in my previous slide. They are sudden opening of the airways, which leads to this abnormal sound. They are known as added sounds. Okay, And the classification, I've just told you, grading is fine crackles, coarse crackles. Different conditions have their different things. Then you maneuver, ask the patient. Whenever you hear crackles, you look for certain things. Someone has asked, what is meant by crepitations? Crepitations or crackles are interchangeable terms. So crackles when you hear, or crepitations when you hear, you have to see which phase of the uh, respiration they are. Inspiratory crackles or they are expiratory crackles and inspiratory early, mid or late. Then you go for whether do they change with the maneuvers such as coughing. The causes I have just shared with you, if they disappear or reduce with coughing, these are the causes. And if they persist even after coughing, then these are the causes. So this is how the things are in the examination. All right. If there are no more questions, then thank you very much. Uh, Vizbhai? Hello. Hello. 